All right. We're rolling? We're rolling. Ready to go. Morning, uh, Mortal Fury family. I'm Dean. Chris. Today we are going to read in Romans mm -hmm. and point out another uh, big, all-encompassing part of Scripture where Paul right. is showing what God has done through His Son, Christ, and, and for everyone. So we, we just want to read some of those things. There's things that God has done, one-sided, that... Um, yeah, has are not, true regardless of what we do or do not do. Absolutely. That's what we yeah, yeah. want to encourage you today. These are just true regardless yeah. of what you think of it. Right. This is from our Apostle Paul. Again, these are the words um, that he learned from the resurrected and glorified Christ. Okay. Consequently then, as it was through one offense for all mankind for condemnation... Thus also it is through one just award for all mankind for life's justifying. For even as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were constituted sinners, thus also through the obedience of the one, the many shall be constituted just. Okay, that's good. So yeah. let's, um, okay, we're going to read this. Uh, in a little bit dip, different arrangement. You're, he's going to put this up on the screen so you yeah. can kind of follow along okay. and see how it is yeah, displayed okay. and how we're reading it. Um, okay, so you want me to read this side? I'll stay on the right side, you stay on the left. All right. Consequently then, as it was, thus also it is, through one offense, through one just award, for all mankind. For all mankind. For condemnation. For life's justifying. Even as. Thus also. Through the disobedience. Through the obedience. Of the one man. Of the one. The many were. The many shall be. Constituted sinners. Constituted just. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I really like how someone saw that. And shows set this, that up. yeah. It shows the parallels, right, of the first Adam and the second Adam, and how close the language, yes, really is, and and how you don't see what's cool on both. You see, for all mankind, and for, for all, all mankind, mankind, you know, it's, yes, it's a, because of him we're all in sin and death, and the second Adam uh, gives life. Uh, but it always had a little bit of a, there was always a hook there um, that I had to respond to. Right, it was always presented as a, an opportunity. Uh, yeah, an opportunity. Something was done for you, and you've got this opportunity to, to accept it. Right, and that was not yes. true of the first time. I was just no. born into that. I didn't have, right. I didn't get to make a decision about whether or not that was my lot in life, but I was just born right into it. Right. Sin and death. And, and we know, right, who would disagree then with, um, you say sin and death. Well, if we just focus on the death part, who among us can overcome that, mm -hmm. right? Or who would disagree that we're in this process, you know, of dying and, and we're going to face death? So who can overcome that? We just, you kind of accept that that's just, right. we've been subjected to that. Nobody, right? Right, so and you just you know that that's our. It's a fact. That's where we're heading. But we don't accept the sin part. We don't no. accept we've been subjected to that, and there's also nothing you can do about that. A hopeless situation. Exactly. What we saw about earlier. What we bring to the table had to be taken upon Christ. Right. There, there is no hope to overcome that. But my past way of thinking was, well, yeah, here's there was something I needed to do to overcome it. Mm -hmm. Not just believing that Christ took care of that. Um, two persons, two acts, two results affecting the entire human race are brought before us in this passage. Adam's disobedience and its race-wide, life-destroying result presents a dark and distressing situation. The obedience of Jesus Christ... And the race-wide, life-giving result is bright and glorious. Um, 
Harry asks, is it not strange that the distressing part of this passage is usually believed without hesitation, but the bright and glorious part is disbelieved? It's funny, I did not consider the, the first part. I just knew that's, that was me. I'm yes, going to die, and they accepted it. And then the second part of that was always uh, presented to me as a potential or an opportunity. But there was an act that I would have to do in order for that second half to be correct. Mm -hmm. But that is not what we're seeing here. No, it's not what Paul's saying. No. It takes away from the work of God's Son. The cross, yes. Puts it on you, puts it on us. Uh, and that was all fear-based anyway. It's ridiculous what we thought we were trying to save ourselves from. Mm -hmm. You know, we're this, somehow we're subjected to death and sin, so we're bad and we deserve some sort of hell or something because mm -hmm. of that. And you better do whatever your system tells you to do or that you're going to the bad place. It's all, it's, it takes away from what God's really doing through his son. Jesus Christ came into the world to save the world. He will not fail in the slightest degree. His death and resurrection life will prove effective for all in due time. That's what we're thankful to believe now. Mm -hmm. This is all in due time. There's a lot going to happen before, like we talked about in the last shows, the consummation, all in all, God becomes all in all. There's a couple more ages, a couple more eons to come. Right. And, and this due time, what Dean just said, will prove effective for all in due time. Uh, does this deny what's, what the scriptures actually teach concerning the future judgment and condemnation of the wicked? Absolutely not. There will be judgment and a day of indignation when God will be paying each of the wicked in accord with his deeds. That's in Romans 2, 5, and 6 and Revelations 20, 12 through 14. Yet this will be chastening judgment with a view to amendment. The Lord is keeping the unjust for chastening in the day of judging. Um, what that is referring to is um, the uh, judgment that is coming is going to be corrective. It's not just going to be annihilation or sent off into a place of eternal torment forever and ever, there is an actual, um, what's, you know, a reconstruction mm -hmm. of uh, the individual where right. he comes into a knowledge of what the cross accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, that's what he means by a chastening judgment. Uh, it is not entirely punitive. There is going to be... Um, um, correction and all will come into a knowledge of what the cross is all about. Here's another good line here, a good question to ponder. Did God bring the creation into being to fulfill a predetermined purpose and plan or was the creation brought into being without plan, without aim? Um, just something to think about. Yeah. What, what do you think about God? Did, did he know what he was doing when he brought this, or now has somehow evil and sin or Satan and or the human being, that's this creation, somehow our will is more powerful. Right. That's what I used to believe. Yeah. I don't know how else to state it. I used to believe it was up to the human being. So I, I would blame that. I remember thinking that he has started all of this, and then now he's yeah. set back. Just, and all of right. this is going on, and you know that now I believe in a, in a sovereignty of God that surpasses all of that, and He's intimately involved in our lives. He is ordaining our steps. You hear me all the time say, uh, it knows the number of hairs on our head." He is intricately involved with mankind every day. Here it is in a nutshell. Just as one person did it wrong, got us all into trouble with sin and death. Another person did it right got us out of it. And that person is Jesus Christ. That's right. We're so, out of it. Right. Because of what he did. And everyone will come to believe that someday. Someday. You can believe it today. That's right. Now's an acceptable time. All right. Thanks for joining us again. Take care. Have a good week. Bye.